All right, man, peace. So, brothers, the New York Jets of the NFL, they recently hired Mr. Adam Gase, formerly the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. And when I watched his press conference, it was very obvious to me that he was having an MK Ultra breakdown. What does that mean? In the MK Ultra program, you have something known as self-destruct programming, where oftentimes the assets, for whatever reason, they'll go through a quote-unquote glitch and they'll start to spaz out on camera. You have to understand, an MK asset is basically just a flesh and blood android. It's a human being, but you can access various aspects of, of their psyche, utilizing trigger words, colors, phrases, or what have you, symbols. And it was very obvious to me as I watched the press conference and I saw the wide-eyed look, the spaced out facial expressions that Adam Gaze was making, that he's an MK asset, and of course, with him being a head coach in the NFL, he's also a handler. As I've stated in other videos, MK handlers are also often assets. Now, MK programmers, they might not be under the programming, but sometimes even they are as well. But MK handlers are often also assets themselves because they all have to report to somebody. And when I started to investigate Adam Gaze's history as a coach in the NFL, it became more and more obvious to me what he clearly was. So they had a very interesting segment here where they made levity of Adam Gase going through his, his spaced out look, which they should not have been doing anyway, because even if you were unsure of what was going on with him, it could have been a health issue. He could have been going through diabetic shock, but that did not bother the cast of the Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman show. So anyway, this will provide me with a backdrop to delve into various aspects of Adam Gase's origins, as well as his associations, which make it very clear to me exactly what he is. So anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to First Take. We're coming to you live above the Heineken River Deck here at Pier 17, brought to you by Chase. Thank you for hanging with us. Ryan Clark is back. Let's talk some football. Adam Gase was introduced yesterday as the Jets head coach. Oh, it was a good time, everybody. Just watch this. See Look at this dude. This dude looks like he's tripping on some LSD. Like he's, <laughs> he's feeling for colors and rainbows and four-leaf clovers and all types of shit. He's seeing leprechauns floating in the air. Look at this guy's face. And look at the person to the left of Adam Gase. On the right side of the screen, but he's to the left of Adam Gase. That person is looking at Adam Gase with a slight smirk on his face. It would not shock me if he knows what's going on here. Many of the top general managers are handlers as well. When you hear the term sports psychologist, the job of a sports psychologist or sports psychiatrist is to bring out the best in their assets. Now, obviously, everybody on the team is not a monarch athlete or a top level athlete, per se, who's been put through the programming. So they also have to know how to administer to everyone on the team. But the main function of a sports psychologist or sports psychiatrist is to make sure that they can tap into all of the talents, all of the latent abilities of a monarch athlete. That's the point. CEO Christopher Johnson oh said he didn't Lord. make the hire to win Twitter, but to win what? football games, but okay. <laughs> that dude is tripping on some LSD or some PCP or some angel dust. And for those of you brothers that don't know, those drugs are what they use, along with sexual abuse, the inflicting of high degrees of pain like electroshock or air deprivation, drowning, etc., to split up the mind into what they call various altars. Those altars are thereby programmed to be brought to the forefront of, of the consciousness of the subject through triggers. And I'll just, yeah. But what is that? I, My boy took pre-workout really? before the press conference really? and he's ready to get oh, to work, let Stephen. Me, let, me, let me just stop, stop, stop. stop. That's that pre-workout. All I'm going to say is this. Charlie Murphy. If that were a player, if that were a Max Kellerman says, <laughs> Charlie Murphy. What are you trying to say, Max Kellerman? You trying to say this man's on that crack rock? We're a player. We, we, we'd either be asking for some tests to be taking place, or y'all would ask me to say, stay off the weed. Well, well, I know. I don't think that, that ain't no weed. That's LSD or that's PCP or he's just going through some type of self-destruct programming. For those of you who don't know, Adam Gase was the offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos in 2013, when Peyton Manning, who's a Monarch athlete, had the greatest season of his career, arguably the greatest season that any quarterback has ever had. I believe that that's the season that he had 55 touchdowns and 13 interceptions or something like that, and he threw for almost 6,000 yards. But yes, Peyton Manning is another Monarch athlete. 
That's why they hid a lot of his misdeeds when he was at the University of Tennessee. When they tried to expose all the black athletes there for sexually harassing and sexually abusing the female attendees at that university, even sexually harassing some of the female trainers, which is what Peyton Manning was doing. Peyton Manning laid his penis on top of some, of some female trainer's head. They covered for that because Peyton Manning always has been an asset. That's why they take care of him. Even after his career, he will always be taken care of. They tried to hide that, but there was a source who snuck the documentation of what Peyton Manning was doing to one of these uh, media members, I believe it's Sean King, the, the super liberal dude who loves to stick up for Colin Kaepernick. And he's the person who brought it to the forefront. The female who was the victim of Peyton Manning's uh, sexual harassment, I believe that she wrote about it in a book. And they tried to poo-poo it. Peyton Manning tried to poo-poo it years ago. Of course, it was true. But Peyton Manning is a high-level Luciferian. In order to take him down, he's going to have to piss off his sponsors. And he's too smart to do that. Stephen A. Smith, if you know nothing, it's because you're not high enough on the totem pole yet. Because many of the higher class members of the mainstream media are fully aware of the MKUltra program, or at the very least, the concept of assets. They know about it because they throw up a lot of those signs. Those signs are used to, you know, to conjure up various altars in the subjects. I am simply saying that look what? on yeah. that man's like, he don't look there. there. And when I say signs, I'm talking about hand signs. There. He don't look there. Listen, all right, y'all, we on first take. If I came up in here on, a, on, on any weekday morning on this show, and y'all and y'all saw me like this. <laughs> Yeah, we said, what the hell is Stephen A. doing? He's looking all up and down and around the room. He must be looking for a damn hairline. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Stephen A. Smith says something very pertinent. Let me rewind this back a little bit. That man said, so he don't look there. He don't look there. <laughs> he said, he don't look there. That's what's called disassociating. When your conscious mind is no longer firmly rooted and what's going on around you, the three-dimensional plane that we exist in. The brain is created to function so that it can, you know, it can interpret exactly what's going on around you and that you can function in real time. When you're disassociating, you're basically going off into another realm or you, or you feel like you're being pulled into another realm, into another quote-unquote universe or into another quote-unquote reality. That's why they need the hallucinogenic drugs. A lot of these processes were developed through the CIA, also through the, um, the U.S. Naval Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. Charles Savage was one of the early developers of a lot of the methodologies to create an MKUltra asset. And, you know, but that's a whole other video for another day. Because you also have, uh, what's this guy's name, the Nazi? Uh, Joseph Mengele. And you also have the, uh, the Canadian physician, uh, psychotherapist. I believe his name was McEwen. But I can go on and on for days. I don't want to get sidetracked into the origins of the mind control program. The point being is this. It's very obvious when I look at Mr. Adam Gaze that he is an asset. I have very little doubt about that. And maybe they did that as a little practical joke. Or maybe somebody says something that they were not supposed to say before the press conference. And he just started to spaz out. And he was trying to hold on to his sense of reality for dear life. <laughs> Who the hell knows? But as I've stated... Uh, Adam Gaze, he got his start in the professional world, or at least he came to fame in the professional world as being the quarterback coach for the Denver Broncos. He presided over or handled Peyton Manning. Now, he attended Michigan State University, and I've stated repeatedly in many of my videos that Michigan State is a hub for monarch mind control. We know that Draymond Green came out of there. We know that Magic Johnson came out of there. We also know that one of the more flagrant provocateurs in this modern day society, Jamel Hill, also came out of the, uh, the Michigan State program, quote unquote. We know that the, the US gymnastics coach, Larry Nasser, came out of there, and there's no doubt in my mind that he also is an MK handler and probably a programmer as well, because he was sexually abusing those girls. And once again, sexual abuse is one of the key tenets of establishing you know, the early stages of fragmenting the mind 
so that you can bring out the best in the athlete. And isn't it interesting that Adam Gase got his start as a coach under Nick Saban, the world famous college football coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Nick Saban at the time was the football coach at Michigan State and Adam Gase goes almost straight from being a student to being an assistant coach under him at Michigan State. He follows him to LSU where Nick Saban wins a title in 2003. Now Nick Saban was a student at Kent State and those of us who have any knowledge regarding protests, particularly during the Vietnam War era, at Kent State, where Nick Saban was a student, you had something called the Kent State shootings or the Kent State massacre, where students at Kent State who were protesting a certain aspect of the Vietnam War, I believe it was uh, Nixon wanting to invade Cambodia, they were protesting that it was on, it was on May 4th of 1970, and the National Guard open fire on those students because supposedly they were trying to scatter the crowd. They got upset because the crowd would not scatter. And according to various reports, some people say that, that the uh, fusillade of bullets lasted about 13 seconds. Others say that it lasted well over a minute. Well, according to Nick Saban, he was supposed to be in that crowd of students, but I believe he said he forgot one of his books or something like that, you know, in his campus dorm room, he had to go back or he was at the cafeteria, something like that, he said. But he was supposed to be there. And Kent State is also a hub for the MKUltra program. The CIA made connections with many of these top universities throughout the 1950s. And these universities would allow the CIA to use some of their students as test subjects. They could kidnap some of the students or abduct them and put them under mind control. Or they would have um, operatives undercover who would have the students try out LSD or PCP and thereafter they could you know, perform certain tests on them and see how they could respond or how they would respond. They also made these agreements with many mental hospitals, regular hospitals, um, libraries, universities all across the country. And that's information that's open for, for public knowledge. Okay, so that's not something I'm, that, that I'm just saying. Once again, the MKUltra program was verified in congressional hearings in 1977. It's not some type of conspiracy theory. So oftentimes people believe that things that seem a little bit overboard are quote unquote conspiracy. No, it's just that you don't know or you're not aware of what's going on around you to that capacity. But just going back to Nick Saban, Nick Saban did come out of Kent State. Do I believe that he's an asset as well? Yes, I do. He's also a top handler. And he came from the coaching tree of Mr. Don James. Now, for those of you who don't know, Don James was the coach at Kent State at the time. And he also was a, a ranking lieutenant in the U.S. military during the Korean War. So you'll see all these type of connections and they normally go back to military intelligence. But you know what, let's let them get back to their little conversation about Adam Gase. Listen, all right, y'all, we on the first take. If I came up in here on, a, on, on any weekday morning on this show and y'all saw me like this. <laughs> Something would be wrong. And something is wrong with that mind, man yesterday. Something. Yeah, something was wrong with that man <laughs> yesterday, Stephen A. Smith. He's under mind control. And you might figure it out somewhere down the line. Who knows? Maybe you have not risen up high enough in the rituals yet. Something is wrong. Going really? To the coaching That's what we doing. That's what we doing. trying to figure out what he's going to do with Sam Donald in the offseason. Look at this dude. There's a lot to think about, Can I ask you a question, my brother? And let me say this as well about the Kent State shootings that occurred on May 4th. Without a doubt, in my mind, that was meant to be a ritualistic sacrifice to the Oak King and the Mother Goddess. And you'll oftentimes find that many of these so-called massacres or shootings that occur in America or even overseas, but mostly in America, they will occur at some time period between April 18th or 19th and May 4th or 5th, somewhere in that area, because that's a time of high significance to the, um, to the Wiccans, to the Celtic Druids, and the Druidic priesthood acts as a high priesthood in America and in various parts of Europe. And that's just an offshoot of the Babylonian mystery school system. The Oak King is another term for Cush, also known as Pan or Sonunos. And the mother goddess is celebrated every year in this country known as, um, as Earth Week. That's in celebration of the mother goddess Gaia, or the, the Earth Mother. She was also known as Rhea or Sybil, so on and so on. But it's really just talking about Eve. It's the veneration and the worship of Eve. Brother, my brother, can I ask a question? Ronnie Clark, if you had right. showed up to any press 
conference. Max, if you had shown up to any conference looking like that, what would be what would people be saying? Huh? We can't we can't have that. Are you looking at that man right there? Are you looking at that man? That's the intensity. The, 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 oh hell no. That's the intensity. Ain't no Can I say my thing? Can I say two things? Michael Irvin, please don't lose the intensity. Keep the intensity. Oh hell no. He might have a hard time sitting still. Really? I so do I. So do I. Have a hard time sitting still. So That's a hell of a tick. Ain't no damn tick. The man was going through some type of self-destruct programming or he just fighting to regain his bearings. But that man is an asset. So, so that's, like that. oh, that's where we going? Oh, well, I just want to play okay, devil's okay. advocate. Yeah, that's cool. I, 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 I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's very, very thoughtful of you. I just want to ask everybody to make sure that they accord uh, the same uh, leniency <laughs> to players Players, professional athletes, Were you not when they show up like that. If you would, would in other words, Stephen A. Smith is trying to make a correlation between Adam Gaze and him being a weed head. I think that, I think that Stephen A. believes that Adam Gaze was very nervous before the press conference, and he smoked some shit that was a little stronger than he thought it was going to be. No, brother, that man is going. To, that man is is tripping on some other shit. It ain't it ain't weed though. He's tripping. That's for damn sure. And I've mentioned this on this channel before. Just going back to the Michigan State angle, Michigan State has always had a connection with the CIA going back to the early 1950s. As a matter of fact, Michigan State was used as a CIA front to help push, and I won't say necessarily initiate, but certainly push along the Vietnam War. Starting from the early 1950s, there was a, there was a person who was associated with Michigan State by the name of Wesley Fischel. Last name spelled F as in Frank, I, S as in Sam, H, E, L as in Larry. First name Wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y. Um, he was a, he was a quote-unquote advisor to the eventual president of South Vietnam by the name of Diem, who was in the administration of Vietnam, the entire country, when it was the, uh, the property of France. When Vietnam started to become fractured and they kicked out the French, Diem left the country because he was promised that he would be put in power. That's, that's how it works, for those of you who don't know. Third world countries, they have their leaders put in power and taken out of power by so-called, quote-unquote, first world countries. They just act as, as proxy rulers. So Diem eventually became, um, I won't say friends, but, you know, he utilized Wesley Fischel as a trusted advisor. Now, Wesley Fischel came out of the University of Chicago. I did a video on the education system. I believe it was called LeVar Ball and the Miseducation System, something like that. And I mentioned in the video that the University of Chicago has always been used as a hub for many of the, the quote unquote elite American thinkers, i.e. Marxists. And that's how they fool the people. They want you to believe that America is fighting against the Marxists. Well, America has an insurgency of socialists and Marxists that have been plaguing this country from the early 1900s. And, and the University of Chicago has always been a hub of Marxism. Wesley Fischel was from the University of Chicago. He eventually became involved in the political science sphere at Michigan State. Political science is just a fancy way of saying, how do we utilize machinations to gain power? That's really all that's about. It's just the knowledge of politics. The word science means to know or knowledge. And, you know, it's just the knowledge of, of how to use politics to gain power. That's the point of politics. So what they did was they worked in tandem with the CIA and they instructed many of the, um, the government forces who were going to set up South Vietnam on how to govern their own people, also on how to harass North Vietnam because they were hoping that eventually they could use that as a piece to engage in, you know, their, their pseudo war with the USSR. But Michigan State and the CIA have always been directly linked with one another. I believe the project was known as the Phoenix Project, so you brothers could look that up. Officially, it started in the early 60s, but um, the, early, the early phases of it were in the early 50s, involving Wesley Fischel and DM, spelled D-I-E-M. When I am on the like Twitter, they were on him. Nobody gave him nobody gave him any well, slack. All I can say is right? nowadays, Tell me what the, they were nowadays saying. with the social media, harsh. don't get caught in an awkward moment or ten. Awkward like I mean, I mean this is doing? his his eyes are bugging out, obviously.
obviously. Okay. He looks spacey and okay. like and he looks like he's. I get what people are saying. Right. Johnson wasn't I don't, great either. I though. can't. Yeah, I can't read into this. I don't yeah. know what this. Hold on, no, no, hold on, hold on. I don't. I, I'm not reading anything specifically into it. I'm simply saying, yo, I saw what I saw. Something ain't right. <laughs> Well, Tiger Woods is also a monarch athlete, so it's interesting that you bring him up. Tiger Woods is under the programming. And he was given that name, Tiger Woods, <laughs> as a way to, um, to help him recognize himself as a totemic animal. Earl Woods was his programmer. Earl Woods was uh, a Green Beret. I haven't seen him like that. Strange about it. If this was something that always happened. Yeah. Like you would kind of be used to it. This one. That's why it's called self-destruct programming. Once again, these people operate according to a series of masks. They they wear a mask in public, and behind the scenes is something else. Go go watch that film, Manchurian Candidate, with Denzel Washington. That's a phenomenal film. It delves deep into the understanding behind the MK Ultra program. And how many of these top shelf politicians are just puppets, they're dolls that are placed in a prominent position as a face for the world. But behind the scenes, there are sponsors that are puppeting them, and, um, and I mean directly puppeting them. Having chips in their head, um, suggestive phrases placed into their subconscious. But that film was very deep. That's a movie that I would have to delve into in a video on its own. This was new. You know, watch new. Maybe the, it was the same thing. The whole thing was strange, time. though. Really, really, really. I'm really, saying. Really, really, I'm throwing out all the possibilities. I'll, I'll, I'll just was strange out. as well, though. I'll just point out. Really, he's a man. Owner. Stop it. A man he's owner. Stop a man stop it. acts normal his whole life. Like and as today. soon as he gets stop announced as the Jets head coach, all of a sudden he can't act right. It's difficult. Man, you show up at the press conference. I mean, what? Wait, if that were a player, it's you say, oh my lord, I'm here to talk football. Okay, let's do it. But anyway, you know what, I'm going to end it on this because this, this has just come to the forefront of my mind. You know, just to take the Michigan State connection even further. I did a video about an MK athlete, or at least a player who I believe is a Monarch athlete, that being Draymond Green. We know that Draymond Green currently attends Michigan State, or pardon me, he's an alumnus of Michigan State University. And he was drafted by the Golden State Warriors. Eventually, Steve Kerr became the coach. I'm on record as stating that Steve Kerr is an MK handler as well. No doubt about it in my mind. Steve Kerr's father, I believe his name was Malcolm Kerr, worked with the U.S. government. They'll claim that he was just an innocent emissary. He was the president of the, um, the University of America in Beirut, Lebanon. He was killed by the group that eventually became known as Hezbollah. I think he was killed in 1982 or 1984. They put two bullets in the back of his head. Well, now, why would they kill somebody who was just the president of a university unless they knew something more about him or they suspected something else about him, possibly being that that was his cover? Now, of course, Steve Kerr's father, as I just stated, was killed. He was the president of the University of America. Steve Kerr's father was named Malcolm Kerr. Malcolm Kerr's father was named Stanley Kerr. Don't you know that Stanley Kerr took his wife and went over to Armenia and got involved acting supposedly as, as an agent of peace in the Armenian genocide. So the Kerrs have been involved in international diplomacy for generation upon generation. And that's my point. Oftentimes it's bloodline. They get told what they're going to do. And based on their proclivities, meaning what they like, they're allowed to delve into that a little bit, but overall they have to stick to the script. Steve Kerr's brother, I think his name is John Kerr, just happens to be a professor at Michigan State. Now what are the chances, what are the chances of all that? He has another brother named Andrew who's a, um, I think he's an architect, and his sister, I believe is Susan, she's involved in the political sphere over in England. So what are the chances of all that, brothers? And John Kerr, who's a professor at Michigan State, um, I believe that he is a alumnus of Stanford University. Stanford University is also a hub 
of the MKUltra programs, Stanford University as well as the Stanford Research Institute. So it's a very, very deep rabbit hole, this entire thing. And it just brings us back to Mr. Adam Gase, who once again, without a doubt in my mind, was going through some type of glitch, as they call it on, on you know, in YouTube verse, for people who don't quite know what they're talking about, but kind of tried to know. But it's really just self-destruct programming, and he's gonna have to be picked up. They probably took him to the back, said something into his ear, and helped him get his act together. But anyway, peace.